All right, this is the fifth and final video of this series on Mussolini and fascist Italy, sort of causes of their expansion in the 1930s. This particular video is the big one, fascism and foreign policy. Now, unlike Hitler later on, Mussolini did not come to power discussing any foreign policy aims. He developed a foreign policy, though, in the subsequent years based on the following goals. Increase national pride. Consolidate domestic support for his regime. Revise the Treaty of Versailles, which they felt cheated by. Dominate the Balkans and the Mediterranean. Build an Italian empire, especially with colonies in Africa. And then, of course, spread fascism to other countries. Now, Italy had been imperialistic since the 1800s. They claimed Libya from the Ottoman Empire, of course, in the war before World War I. Eventually, they did have Eritrea and Somaliland or Somalia as well. None of these territories really yielded any valuable resources. Oil would eventually be found in Libya, but not yet. And so they didn't increase any Italian prestige in the world. They had also been defeated in Abyssinia by the Ethiopians or Abyssinians in the 1890s, which is a pretty humiliating defeat for the supposedly superior European forces. Now, like Hitler, Mussolini desired autarky for Italy. However, Italy had limited resources at home, and industrialization was uneven, with it mostly happening only in the north. Mussolini proclaimed that productivism should be the ideology for Italy, a vague term that meant simply increasing productivity among Italians and favored heavy industry over consumer goods, along with high taxation to fund those projects. Mussolini sort of strayed the line. He, he wanted something in all, that was an alternative to capitalism, but also he didn't like communism or socialism. He wanted a society where all people worked together for the common good of the country, but um, not a purely communistic system. This has been called an elaborate fraud, and in reality, labor was exploited. The way this ties to foreign policy is that Italy's economy was pretty heavily dependent on trade with Britain, France, and the U.S. in the 1920s. Fascism caused some issues because fascism advocated eventually expanding to build this empire, which could put the economy at risk because that would lead to other countries embargoing them, and they couldn't afford that. They couldn't afford to lose that trade. Mussolini also desired some territories around Italy, the island of Corsica, which was French at this time. Um, he desired that because Corsicans spoke a dialect of Italian and um, were seen as rightfully part of Italy. But France was more powerful than Italy, and so Mussolini sort of tabled that for a while. In the 1920s, Mussolini's foreign policy was mostly opportunist, taking advantage of small incidences. Italian military officers who were mapping Albania's borders in Greece were killed on the island of Corfu, which led to Italy shelling the island until Greece paid a financial indemnity. The port of Fium was simply handed over to uh, Mussolini after an agreement with the newly founded Yugoslavia to avoid a war between the two countries. Before the Depression, the Italian economy was already in trouble. Mussolini had mishandled it trying to achieve autarky. There was massive inflation. Its wages were some of the lowest in Europe. If on a relative index of income, England was 100, Germany would have been 73, and Italy was 39 compared to the U.S., which would have been like 190. People started to say that the fascist salute was a way of showing how high the grass would grow in the streets of Rome. After the Depression began in 1929, many countries began erecting trade barriers in an attempt to boost domestic trade. This includes the U.S. with the smoot holly tariff. This hurt Italy, which relied on world trade to survive. Mussolini started to blame economic problems on the Wall Street crash, and he was forced to turn away from Western markets and look to closer Eastern neighbors like Yugoslavia, as well as Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Romania. Italy, though, found some freedom in this. They basically found that now 
they could pursue a foreign policy that didn't rely on, um, you know, keeping the West appeased and thus not breaking those trade barriers. Basically, the trade barriers were already broken now, or that were, were already done away with, and thus um, they could be freer in their pursuit of empire. Eventually, Mussolini would bring Italy through the Depression by similar things to Hitler or FDR or anyone else in the West with deficit spending, borrowing money, um, cooperating with industries. And just like Hitler, he expanded the army and navy to include one million men by late 1925, which helped greatly with unemployment. He also used violence to end strikes and riots over employment. After the Depression, Mussolini had more control of the industry of Italy and therefore could help arm the military. In 1933, Mussolini reorganized the government to give him the title of Minister of War, Navy, Air, Interior, and Foreign Affairs. So basically, by the early 1930s, Italy was in a position where they were looking to expand, um, especially in regards to building an empire in some places like Africa or Eastern Europe. And um, as we will see eventually when we talk about this another time, they wanted to sort of be on the world stage, just like the Western powers building an empire. All right, that's it.